Hello class, in this video we're going to collage in a background uh, for this image. And yes, we have the sky already, but what I mean is other elements in there, so it's just not a flat plane. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some mountains. This is sort of how this house was designed. That would be somewhere where there's mountains. Um, and with the collage method, that's fairly easy to do. Like the ground in the sky, all I did was I found an image um, and I pulled it up into Photoshop. Here it is. Select one that you like, and we're just going to take. I'm just going to take this piece, right? I don't need the foreground. I could potentially use some of the water, perhaps, and I don't need the sky either because I already have those. So I need to separate out just the piece I want. And actually, just to get started, I'm actually going to use the crop tool a little bit. So mine's hidden down under here. Um, you don't necessarily have to. I just find sometimes it's easier. So I know I don't want anything in the bottom. I'm going to keep an edge of water, I think, because I think that could look cool. I can always remove it later on if I don't want it anyway. And you can bring down the sky. My, there's not a lot of sky in mine to cut away, but if there is in yours, so we just, it'll be easier to select if there's less sky ultimately. Um, and then what we'll do is we want to select the mountain. Now the mountain's a little tricky to select because there's lots of greens and browns and dark, uh, nearly black colors for shadows and other things. Oftentimes the sky is a little easier to select. So what I'm going to use is my magic wand tool. So if you see the quick select, just hold down, click and hold to select the magic wand tool. And you're going to make sure your additive selection set is checked. So you want this box to be highlighted. Um, set your tolerance to the default level. It's fine, 32. And you're just going to click on a piece of the sky. You can see it, it selects a large piece of sky, but not everything because the color changes. So I'm just going to go over here and click there. And then wherever it ends again, I'll go over and click. And I'll come over here and click again until the entire sky is selected. Um, now I've got the sky selected, but really what I want is the mountain selected. And oftentimes it's easier to select backwards because it's easier to select the sky what i'll do is just go i'll go select in inverse or control shift i and then i'll just do control c for copy come over to my image control uh, v for paste um, it's quite small i think that's still going to be okay uh, higher quality images will, will look better and quite honestly i should take a, a minute back i'm just you know doing this assignment as demonstration um, I want to leave a lot of room for you guys to, to experiment with what you want. And it could take a long time to find a high quality image that really represents what you want to do. And don't be afraid of spending the time. The collage method has a lot of great techniques, but um, that doesn't mean it should be like, oh, I can find an image in 30 seconds. Um, again, which is why I actually take a lot of my own photographs now to help support this, which I'm not using for, for this assignment here. But anyway, uh, we got it in. I need to scale it up. So I'm going to edit, transform, uh, or free transform is fine. And I'm going to take the corner and pull up proportionally this time, because certainly mountains and trees need to look fairly proportional. Once I double click, it'll sort of resolve itself, and we can see what it looks like in that way. Now, if I actually pull down, what I might do, do now, we've got a, a few things that I might want to look at doing. Um, one is this water edge looks a little silly here. It's OK here because it creates a little edge. But I think what I'm going to do is not cut it off in such a straight line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my polygon lasso tool and sort of come here from this edge and then come up uh, like this um, at an angle like that. So it's just not straight and I get get less of a water edge and more like this river is going towards the background in the distance. Now the other thing I have to do is I have to pay close attention to my horizon line as well. So if this is my horizon line, the mountain is not flat. So that might go above the horizon line. And this horizon line is the horizon line of the building itself, right? But anything that's flat would not be above this line. So right now I'm sort of implying there's a grass edge and then there's some water, some foreground trees. So all of this stuff should be below that horizon line. So what I want to do is I want to just lower it. Again, it can be lowered. It can overlap the way it's up these layers. And we'll just estimate approximately where it is. Certainly in the back, there probably is some topography changes. So, um, you know, it is a mountain, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's going to be that edge where it starts to rise up is going to be just below that blue horizon line to set the per perspective approximately right. And ultimately, I think this is going to look pretty good. Um, we'll get a little mountain here and some little mountains in the distances over there. A little bit of peak of water could, could look interesting um, for this. Now, if you if in your case, my, I think mine came out pretty well. The sky is pretty clean. 
once I blew it up, I don't see it. I see maybe a little bit of the old sky there that I want to clean up. The reality is right here, it's going to be behind my house because we can see my house there. So anything that's behind the house, I don't even need to worry about. Um, uh, but um, if you do just zoom in and maybe trim it out, you know, use polygon lasso tool. If there's a little area you want to trim out and delete it and you get, get rid of it. The other things you might want to start looking at right now is that um, getting things sort of tonally set. We can You can do this again near the end, but right now my grass is pretty bright green, probably too green. My sky is also pretty green. The mountain's a little dark. So I might want to go on my mountain and go to adjust, maybe play with my levels, and uh, I can try what auto does. It sort of auto just brightens it up a bit, sort of brings it into the image, and I can... I think it looks pretty good, but if I wasn't happy, I could play with these settings. I might go down to my ground plane as well and go image, adjust, levels. Again, I can see what auto does. Um, auto, I actually want it to be a little bit darker, I think. Um, not too much, so a little less saturated, perhaps. That's too much. I might be making it worse. And sometimes that happens because the reality is you just go and you draw until you get what you want and the way you want it to be. So anyway, that's looking okay. Let's see, that was the original one. That's subtle shift, just made it slightly darker, just took the saturation down just a little bit. And I'll say that's okay. And of course you can adjust these at any time. Quite often I'll find myself readjusting them over and over again as I work through a drawing, especially at the end once all, once all the elements are in. So um, there we go. There we go. The, we got the background in. And the, la the last thing I'll say is actually I just used one image, but there's no reason why you can't use multiple images to set the foreground and the midground and the background. Maybe you like this mountain over here. Maybe there's another mountain over there and so on and so forth. And actually in the next couple of videos, we'll show some other elements for landscaping a little more specifically, but it's sort of the same concept. Whatever you want, you find an image and you paste it in. So good luck with all of this.